Did you play the Philippines? Yes, we did play the Philippines. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> okay, so what happened about, um, back to about 2000 and six or seven um we claimed the name dishwalla our entity and we we just formed an equal partnership and so when we um took possession of the name we were able to have control of facebook and instagram and right. youtube and all these things right so um around the time i was really i needed i know i need to do better about facebook posting and, and <laughs> it's like we've been so bad on the dishwalla page but um I was able to look at the demographics and we noticed that over half of the people on Facebook were Filipino. Huh. And, and um, so I started to kind of have fun with it and put some posts out there. If we played in the Philippines, where should we play? You know, what, what should the set list be? You know, just, just engagement questions, you know, out there. Um, uh, and so I started reaching out to Ovation and to some of the bigger promoters, and we were just not big enough maybe for some of the larger promoters. But um, we ended up um, getting uh, getting a call from uh, a, a, pr a smaller promoter that um, wanted to host us to play his uh, surf contest in La Union. Yeah. Oh, nice. And um, I know, right? So, um, Sun and Sand Beach. No, yeah. Yeah, 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 Sol Arena. So, oh, yeah. um, so um, bingo, ben, Benji um, Manahan. Uh -huh, Benji uh, Manahan, yeah. Yeah, brings us on out there. And uh, so, uh, so we're all set. We're all excited. We get we go through so much to get. And there. There. Yeah, it's and a five-hour drive from the airport. Yes, and I was behind the guys because I... I lost my pass. I got to LAX and no passport. Uh -oh. And so we had to do some rush things. So the guys were ahead of me. They already got out to La Union. They were already partying before, <laughs> you know, I get out there and stuff. So anyway, they got to take me separately. And uh, um, we get out to La Union and the worst storm I have ever seen, like, oh. <laughs> comes through. Oh. And, and it just got rained out. The stage, everything's soaking wet. And, and so... Um, I just, we went down, I can remember Jim and I going out there on the stage and we, we, there were so many people oh, out man. there to see the show anyway, it was totally rained out. So we just signed stuff, hundreds of people signing stuff, signing stuff out on the beach. And, um, uh, and we, just, we hung out that night and we, we packed up and we went back, back to our homes and flew back to the U S Another 16 it. hour flight. Yeah, that was it. So, um, so the, the arrangement we made was that we were going to go back. We'll go back. And we'll go back, bingo, and we'll do another show f for these guys. So um, they rebooked us at um, Megatent Libis. Yes, in Libis. In Libis. Um, so we, we, I think it's about a year later. <laughs> Check this out. We get out there, and there's like, a, there is a typhoon on the way. There's a typhoon on the way. I kid you not. I kid you not. They put us up at like Marco Polo or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, in Ross yeah. Boulevard, yeah. Yeah, a really nice hotel. And we're up there. And <laughs> just and so Bingo sends like some bro of his that uh, that worked for the Coast Guard. But he had, he had been stationed in San Diego and spoke great English and stuff. And so he was he sent um, him to come like kind of calm us down and it's <laughs> this is the path and it's gonna go this way it's not gonna come uh -huh. and, and, but we're prepared for whatever <laughs> and, oh my gosh so um but it, it, we, we, it the time comes we we do play the show it did rain a little bit but it was mellow and uh one of the best shows i mean best attended shows of of us as a headliner that we'd ever had the the reception we had yeah. was so warm and so great Every single song, people singing along. I mean, it was like, it was so awesome. The we absolutely loved it. We, so the, yeah. the, the singer of the of the band who played before you, uh, Nino Mendoza from yeah. the Blue Jean Junkies. Blue Jean Junkies, yeah. He was. I, he was. I he keep was, in touch with Miggy. Uh, Miggy Matute. Yeah, yeah. He was. Um, Nino was here, and he was talking about that gig. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, how cool. Yes. I think. Uh, yeah, Blue Jean Junkies, and maybe Purple Shoes. Mm. And um, what was the other one? I can't remember the name. Oh, man. Wait, you know what Nino was, was telling us? Remember? 
There was oh, you were probably asleep, but uh, yeah. <laughs> you're probably. Anyway, uh, the show was amazing, yeah. and the pictures and everything. It just turned out incredible from it. So, what was and the what was the reaction like when you played in in, um, in front of a Filipino crowd? Very receptive, no? Oh yeah, very receptive, and um, it was just so cool. And I, I actually I went out into the crowd at the end of the show, and uh, I don't know why, but you know I went out there and started meeting some people and and then the rest of the guys kind of came out and, and realized it was mellow too and and some of the the fans that i made contact with that night i still keep in contact yes you know, the, and uh we just we absolutely loved the philippines we just loved the people the warmth yes. of the people are just so humble and so sweet and we you know and then and then so my daughter decides to go on a mission, right? right. Well, yeah. <laughs> so where does she get called to on the Wait, mission? Wait, she gets called to go to the Philippines or she picks yes. the Philippines? No, oh, you cannot get to pick. Okay. You get of the called. whole world, she gets picked. She gets sent to uh, to the island of Cebu. Oh! And so she, Emmeline, this little white kid from Meridian, <laughs> Idaho, is somehow fluent in Visaya. Yeah, the Visayas, yeah. And... Um, so she served this mission for 18 months in Cebu, and she went to Lapu Lapu. That's a nice. That's a nice place. And Bohol, yeah, which was beautiful. Yes, the um, chocolate hills. And yeah, the yeah. chocolate hills. So, <laughs> so Emmeline really got to know the culture and love the people for for 18 months working. Was she there. talking to you about it, giving you feedback oh, about? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Does she speak Visaya? No, She's fluent in Visaya. She does fluent. Oh. Now check this out. She gets home from her mission. She meets a boy, I think online, they meet. And um, <laughs> she's suggested by another friend that lives in Calgary that, that had served with her in Cebu. She's like, you're going to talk to this guy. And um, so she ends up hitting it off with this guy online, and they end up really hitting it off. And then they decide to meet and stuff. Well, he's also fluent in Visaya. So, really? Yeah, and they got married. Wow. So I have my daughter and my son-in-law. That if they want to say something privately, yeah, they they're could, speaking yeah. Cebuano to each other. Right. It's like they could, they could they could sell you out, you know, you know. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I'd have no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just like it the connection to the Philippines for me has just been you know, a, a lifelong thing. Cause like my first girlfriend I ever had in Santa Barbara. That's Filipino. Barbara Aquino. Oh. And, related and, to the former president, though. Exactly. No. Right. I think this is a common name I've discovered. <laughs> yeah. But very prominent, though. Yeah, so she dumped me. And that was the only time I've ever been, like, dumped by a girl was, was from Barbara. But we, we still keep in touch, and it's kind of fun. But uh, her family, you know, was straight up Filipino in Santa Barbara and just so sweet to me. Um, and, you know, over the years, it's just like... It, the Filipinos just keep coming into my life for some reason. And then, and then you, right. And then you bumped into Michael. Yeah. <laughs> you bumped into Michael in Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, so, yeah. you know what? I mean, it's nothing by chance, no? No. Everything by design. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's amazing. The the world we live in is just one one world. And, and with me, I'm fortunate that it's music that connects oh, yes. me with, with people around yes. the world. And yes. Even if it's a country that sort of like does, dislikes the u.s or something if you're a rock star it's like it's okay you're gonna get a pass though anyway we'll love you anyway 